Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine is the largest military conflict in Europe since World War II. The hostilities provoked by Russia, the use of military equipment and all types of conventional weapons cause huge damage to the environment. And not only in Ukraine. How does Russian aggression destroy the world's ecology? Let's dive into the context. No matter how much it may seem that Ukraine is very far from the country from which you are watching this video, but the environment has no borders. To realize this fact, just recall the disaster at the Chernobyl NPP on April 26, 1986. At that time, more than 3 million citizens of Ukraine and more than 7 million people around the world were affected. Almost 40 years have passed and its consequences still resonate far beyond the borders of the former Soviet Union. In 2022, Russian troops who invaded Ukraine from the territory of Belarus immediately seized the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and occupied the exclusion zone. Already on the second day of the occupation of the Chernobyl zone, February 25, 2022, the level of radiation in the exclusion zone increased by 20 times, all because the Russians ignored radiation safety standards. They moved around the Chernobyl zone on heavy equipment. They dug trenches in the Red Forest, raising radioactive dust. They provoked a number of fires in the Chernobyl forests. All the radioactive dust and ash from the fires rises into the air, and it's carried by the wind for tens of kilometers around. Let's move on. Ukraine is an agricultural country with significant export potential, which is also a key supplier of grain to the UN World Food Program. David Beasley, director of the World Food Program, said at the beginning of the war that if the supply of Ukrainian grain is not restored, the world faces a hungry hell on earth. But to perform the function of a breadbasket, Ukraine needs to freely engage in agricultural activities. Russia deliberately added fertile Ukrainian lands to the list of military targets. Explosives that do not detonate during an explosion remain in the craters in the form of sulfur and heavy metals. In addition, as a result of the detonation of ammunition, chemical emissions occur, leading to acid rains, which which then destroyed the land and crops. Ukraine still has enough agricultural capacity in the territory far from the front line. However, the aggressor does not stop either, so no one can guarantee the safety of the crops. The Russians are also massively attacking Ukrainian ammunition depots, oil depots, oil refineries and other chemical industry facilities all over the country. During the combustion of petroleum products, extremely toxic compounds enter the atmosphere, together with carbon monoxide, and pollute everything around them. The burning of diesel, petrol and aviation fuel is estimated to have resulted in emissions of 18.8 .8 million tons of CO2 in equivalent. Additional emissions of 3.1 million tons of CO2 equivalent were caused by the production and use of artillery shells and other ammunition. The number of fires larger than one hectare has increased 36-fold compared to the pre-war period of 12 months. In 2021, only one forest fire with an area of more than five hectares was recorded in Ukraine. The total area of landscape fires on the territory of Ukraine today exceeds 2.4 million hectares. The total volume of additional emissions from war-related fires is estimated at 17.7 million tons of CO2 equivalent. Greenhouse gas emissions attributable to 12 months of the war totaled to 120 million ton CO2 equivalent. This is equivalent to the total GHG emissions produced over the same period in a country like Belgium. All these are huge amounts of greenhouse gases that continue to create a hole in the planet's ozone layer. On June 6, 2023, the Russian military blew up the Kahovka hydroelectric station. Many, including the EU institutions condemned the destruction qualifying it as an ecocide and the worst environmental disaster in Europe since Chernobyl. By blowing up the Kahovka Dam, Russia wasted over 18 cubic kilometers of fresh water. This deepens the climate crisis, as the dam explosion has resulted in over 50,000 hectares of Ukrainian forests being flooded, and at least half of them are at risk of dying. Some 150 tons of toxic industrial lubricants were reportedly released alongside 
pesticide contaminants from sewage pits, petrol stations and agrochemical and pesticide stores, as well as dislodged landmines. These contaminants are drifting down the Dnipro River into the Black Sea, which washes the shores of six countries, including Romania and Bulgaria, and is connected to the Mediterranean Sea, which washes Europe and the Middle East. By its actions, Russia proves every day that it seeks to make the territory of Ukraine uninhabitable and deliberately commits crimes against the environment. Thus, by destroying Ukraine, Russia is actually contributing to the worsening climate crisis that the whole world is struggling with. After all, there are no concepts of state borders for emissions into the atmosphere, polluted underground water entering rivers, seas and oceans, and ozone holes.